What's going on traders? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's episode is going to be on the ultimate candlestick masterclass. Now I took some time to put this together because there's a lot of misinformation out there and there's a lot of overwhelming information out there that a lot of you traders are trying to digest to apply to, apply to your trading. Now, I know it's not easy um, because of the wealth of knowledge out there and uh, trying to bring it all together can be very difficult. But today's video is really going to break things down to you in its simplest form. And I really do hope that it will benefit you in your trading with your knowledge and also your application to the markets. I really try to make this as simple as possible. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you my approach to the markets. So I hope you enjoy this. Grab yourself a cup of tea or a coffee, get a notepad and pen and take some notes. And if you need to watch this over a few times, please do. At the end, I'm going to share with you three examples so that you can see how you can use the information you're about to learn um, in the live markets. And of course, I always advise you to go and back test a good amount of trades just to make sure that you understand the concepts and you know how to apply them. Before we move on, please smash that like button for me. Make sure if you're not subscribed, you subscribe and turn on notifications for next time when I post a video. So let's move on to the first point here. What traders really think they need. Now this really, you know, applied to me as well when I started trading in the beginning. There was many books and many, many, many documents like this out there that shared all these different kind of patterns in the market, you know, bullish reversal patterns, continuations, et cetera, et cetera, with all these fancy words and names, you know, three stars at the bottom, bear fortress, forceps, double push. I mean, to be brutally honest with you, it's absolutely hilarious. I mean, kudos to the person that decided to call them these names because I think very imaginative. Um, And to be brutally honest as well, I'm not saying that these are not good patterns and they don't work in the market, but I'm going to be brutally honest with you. You just don't need it. There's a few free, a few things that you will need to focus your attention on when trading. And we're going to go over some of them as we go through uh, the next few examples and slides. But if you're the type of trader like I was who decided to learn every single reversal pattern or so called reversal pattern or continuation patterns out there, and you're still trying to learn them, stop wasting time. Watch this video, and as I go through it, hopefully I'll be able to clear up any doubts that you may have. Now, what you really need. Now, this is my humble opinion, and this is all I personally use in the live markets. Now, you can see here three examples of three different candle formations. And what's really important when you look at these is to really have a good understanding of what they mean. Now we'll go on to the understanding of what they mean shortly, but if you just look at these, you probably all have seen these before in the markets, whether you're a reversal trader, a continuation trader, whether you trade supply and demand, whether you use harmonics, Fibonacci's, you use EMAs, it really doesn't matter, we've all come across them. Now, the way I like to see these is very, very simple. And these big ones here, you of course should know uh, the green one here represents a bullish candle and the red ones represent bearish candles. Now, if you take a look at this bullish candle comparable to the candles to the right, you will see that this candle is full in body. It's really large and it indicates here to us one really, really important factor, momentum. And that's how I like to see these big bullish candles, especially when the body is full. There's not too many wicks to the upside or to the downside. You can see that the move to the upside was pretty straightforward and there was not much that could stop this candle from closing bullish. Here we also have the bearish candle as well, very full in its body here. You can see that there's not much wick rejections to the downside or to the upside, and there's not much here to suggest that it struggled to push down. Now, this candle is very important because when you're looking to trade, this is a very good signal slash indication that either the bulls 
all the bears are in control of the markets at this moment in time. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the market's going to continue up or continue down, but it does suggest to us that there is a high probability that that's what it will do, simply because the volume in these candles illustrate to us that there is real momentum. And if you identify these candles as, let's just say, a train, if you were looking to sell the market and this was a train that was pushing in your direction, do you think you're the type of person that would want to jump in front of this train and say, hold on a minute, even though I can see you're really bullish, and I mean really bullish, do I want to sell the markets now? Well, I think for the majority of you, you're probably saying no. Same with this bearish candle. If you view this as a bearish train and you say to yourself or you plan to buy the market, would you really jump in front of this bearish train when you can see that the volume is really strong to the downside? It's very full in its body and there's not much here to suggest that the market's going to start going bullish now. But I think for the majority of you, you'll probably say no. So these are your momentum candles, and these candles are very significant, as you will go on to see in a moment. The next candles we'll take a look at is these candles here. Now, what do these represent? Well, comparable to the big momentum candles, the bodies of this bullish and the bodies of this bearish candle are very, very small. Also, what you'll be able to see from these candles is huge wick rejections from the upside and from the downside. Now, what this would usually represent is this. This bullish candle, as it was pushing bullish, would have created this kind of formation. Now, usually we'd probably see this as an indecision from the bears, not able to close this market or continue pushing bearish, hence the reason why it's retraced and then turned bullish, and then continued bullish. So that could suggest to us at this stage that, guess what? The bulls are in control of the market. There's a high chance price will continue up. But something happens during this process. And as the candle has pushed bullish after being bearish, you can see here that it's retraced. Now, the way you need to see this is that this bullish train has attempted to push up indicating some sort of bullish sentiment in the market and then completely failed. And the same here with this bearish candle. This bearish candle would have had to push bullish first to create a candle that would be green. Then what would have had to happen is this candle would have had to retrace, which would have left this wick behind and then push bearish to create a strong bearish candle to the downside with a wick on the top which would potentially indicate the bulls tried to push the market up, they failed, the candle then retraced, went bearish, and then failed again. Now, I am hope I'm building the picture here for you. These candles signify a depletion in the market, simply meaning that bulls or bears attempted to push the market in one or the other direction, but failed to complete that move and close that candle with a strong bullish or bearish body. Now, when there's a depletion in the market, that simply means, comparable to the candles to the left, which are our momentum candles, that there is hardly any volume in the markets. That could signify many things to us, but for the most, uh, the most common reason for this to happen is for the simple fact that there's no volume and potentially the markets are either stalling or reversing. So keep this in mind as we go through some of the examples at the end. The final candle we'll take a look at is these candles here to the right. Now, comparable to our, our depletion candles here, you can clearly see these candles have closed with a body at the top of the candle or at the bottom of the candle. Now, you probably know that this is a bullish close and this is a bearish close. Now, what does this mean to us? Well, it simply means that at one point in time, this bullish closed candle was really strong bearish with a wick on top. 
Now, that simply means that during this process of this candle being open, the bears were in control of the market, they were pushing it down, and there was a very strong indication that the market was going to continue going bearish. But at one stage or another, whatever got in its way or whatever happened, maybe a news event or, yes, just a news event, the candle said, hold on a minute, bears, what are you doing? I'm not interested in being a red candle. I'm not interested in continuing down. And at this stage in time, I don't believe that there's enough volume in the markets to continue to push this market down and close strong. Once that happens, the candle starts to retrace itself. It comes back to the open and then it closes bullish. Now, this candle has moved not just this much, but it's moved down, it's moved up to its open, and it's continued bullish. So what does this signify to us? Well, this signifies bullish strength in the market and bearish weakness. Because if the bears are failing to close bearish, like we've seen from our momentum candles, and then it closes bullish, there's a strong indication that bulls are stepping into the market. Here we also have the bearish body close. At one stage or another, this candle was really strong bullish. This was a green candle. The bulls pushed the market up and attempted to continue bullish. This simply means at this stage, the bulls were in the market, they were controlling it, and there was a lot of volume that was pushing to the upside. But all of a sudden, the bears said, no, no, or the bulls said, don't have enough orders in the market. I can't sustain this bullish move. And it retraces its whole move back to the open and then continues bearish to close with a bearish body. What does this represent to us? Well, this simply represents the fact that the bulls were not strong enough to hold this market bullish. The bears came in, took the market over, turned this bullish candle into a bearish candle leaving a sign for us, which is this huge wick, that there is a weakness on evil or side. And this candle we call our rejection wick. Now, these rejection wicks are very important as well for many different phases in the market. But more often than not, you will see these candles start to develop for continuations or reversals. So just to recap, we have here our strong momentum candles, we have our weak depletion candles, and we have our signs of weakness and wick rejections. So let's move on to the next part of the lesson. So what do these candles really represent? Well, for our momentum candles, as you can see here, which was the bullish body and the bearish body close, they signify strength in the market. Strong closes with the least resistance. Now we've already gone over a few pointers here, but if these candles are closing with strong bodies, there's least resistance with the wick rejections, and we can see that there's a lot of momentum in the market, then this indicates to us strength in the market. It also indicates to us momentum. If you look at this green candle and I asked you, you have one trade left, just make the right call. Don't try to think about anything other than the simple fact, where could the market go? If I said this closed strong bullish or you saw that it closed strong bullish, what direction would you be taking your trade? But I think for the most of you, you'll be looking to take this bullish. And the same with this bearish candle. If this bearish candle closed the way it has, and I said, you have one trade left. Which direction do you want to take this trade? For the majority of you, you'd probably say bearish. So these momentum candles here represent a clear direction of either the bulls or the bears being in control of the market at this moment in time. What else does it represent to us? Well, it represents volume. There's evidence here that there is a high chance price will continue in the direction it has closed. Comparable to our depletion candles, 
or our wick rejection candles. We have more substance here to be working with and also to identify what the next candle could be or the direction that the market will continue to go. The final thing that it could represent is control in the markets. This clearly identifies to us that the bulls or the bears are in control. Comparable to our indecision candles or our wick rejection candles, we can clearly see here that either the bulls or bears, the bulls or the bears are in control of the market, which should give you a lot more confidence in terms of the direction you wish to take your trades. So let's move on to the next slide. Now, here is an example. We can clearly see here on Swiss franc, Japanese yen, on the hourly time frame, that the overall structure of this market was pushing bullish for a long period of time. Now, whilst it was pushing bullish, we had an area in the market where price was failing to break above. This can simply indicate to us that this is the end of the uptrend or that the bulls are taking profits or bears are stepping into the markets. What we want to do at this stage is we want to identify a key level in the market where price is failing to break below. The reason why we want to identify this is because this still indicates to us that the overall trend of the market is up. Once we get a break of this level with strong bearish candles indicating momentum, there is a very high chance that price now can continue down. But a basic principle when trading is always to wait for price to pull back to a key level for a retest, because in any market structure, we have a push phase, we have an exhaustion phase, and then we have the continuation. So with this example, what we're looking at now, once we've gathered the information we need and we understand the directional bias we want to take the trade, what we're looking for is for momentum. Now, momentum works in both directions. With the pullback, we have a strong momentum candle here indicating a bullish sentiment. But this bullish sentiment is pushing back into a key level in the market. Now, if you remember the three patterns or candle formations that I mentioned in the beginning, we have momentum in a bullish direction indicating bullish control. We have an indecision indicating no one's in control. We have a key level in the market where price comes back to retest. And then what do we have finally? We have a beautiful, beautiful momentum candle that closes bearish. For the simple fact that the trend was up, it failed to make a new high, it broke the previous structure, and now we have bearish momentum in our direction, what can we start to anticipate? We can anticipate that the market will continue pushing down. And this is what you can see here from this example with this bearish momentum candle. Here we have another example on Swiss franc Japanese yen, again on the hourly time frame, but this is now a bullish example. We can see the overall sentiment of the market was pushing bearish. We see price was failing to break some of these structural lows. We have multiple wick rejections here indicating that price is failing to break these structures. And we also have a break of a key level in the market. After the break, we have strong bearish momentum candles pushing to the downside, indicating that the bears are potentially in control of this market. And then we have an indecision to indicate a depletion. After the depletion, what do we see? A very strong bullish momentum candle with a strong close to the upside, comparable to the candles to the left here. Is very convincing that if we want to take a trade, there's a very high chance price will continue up. And as you can see, this is exactly what happened. So this is how we look at our momentum candles. And as you can clearly see from the two examples, they're fairly similar, very simple process, and very easy to identify. Bring structure, key levels, and the momentum candles together, and you get a great indication of how you could be trading them. Now, the depletion candles, what do they represent? Well, the depletion candles, as we've mentioned before, close with wicks to the top, wicks below, wicks to the top, and wicks below with a small body indicating a depletion in the market. Well, the first thing they represent is weakness. We clearly know, comparable to the momentum candles, that neither bulls or bears are in control of the market. And it's very easy to identify that 
because this candle does not give you any indication of which direction you should be taking this trade. Well, especially when they're like this. They also indicate to us indecision. There's no clear direction where the market can go. At this stage, you don't really want to be trading the market. You want to be using these candles to help identify a weakness or indecision so that you can get an overall bias where the market could go once you link the momentum candles and the wick rejection candles together. But we'll go on to that shortly. Let's take a look at two examples. So taking a look at example number one, we can clearly see that the overall structure of this market was pushing bearish. Now, at this stage, you can see an area in the market where price is creating multiple wick rejections. Now, until price starts to break above a key level in the market, there is a strong indication that the market is still continuing bearish, but at this stage, probably with less volume. Now, when we take a look at this example here, what you can see at this key level is multiple depletion candles. Now, why is this important to us? Well, the way you're going to use depletion candles is not just by identifying wicks to the top and wicks to the body. You have to bring everything together. By doing this, what you will say to yourself is this. The direction of the market is down. The key level represents where price should stay, trade below in order to continue bearish. And then what you identify is the behavior that comes into this key level. Now, you can see that the behavior coming into this key level here is very, very bullish. At this stage, what you're saying to yourself is with the volume that's coming off of the back of these bullish candles, there's a very high chance that if price breaks above this level, that the market will continue bullish. But once you start to bring the depletion candles into the picture at the key level, you will start to see that the bulls have attempted to push this market up, but are continuing to fail, which simply means that no one is in control of the markets at this stage and definitely not the bulls. But there is a high chance that the bears are having an influence on price not pushing up, hence the reason why we've gone from being strong bullish to now all of a sudden a depletion. Match that with a strong momentum candle at a key level in line with the direction of the market, which is bearish, and look what happens with this market. It continues down. Now you have a first phase in the market where the bears have now taken back over. And then you have the second phase. After a push phase, you have an exhaustion. And then after an exhaustion, you should have a continuation. If we bring all of the behavior here over to this information here, what do you see? Well, you see the first phase. You see the pullback, which is exhaustion. And again, you have evidence after this strong bullish candle that there's a depletion in this bullish move and there's evidence that bears are having an influence and that there is a weakness from the bulls. Link that with a very nice bearish candle and look what happens with the market. We continue to push bearish. Now, this is example number one. Let's take a look at example number two. Here you can see here, which is slightly different. So take note, not everything that you're going to see here is going to be 100% identical in the markets. You must be willing to understand the concepts and principles to be able to apply them. This is on British pound, Canadian dollar on the 4H time frame. You can clearly see that the market has been moving sideways for a long period of time. You see that price is not breaking highs. It's not breaking lows, which simply indicates to us that the market is in a range. Now, when the market's in the range, what you want to do is mark your structural highs and mark your structural lows. The reason you want to do this is because if price breaks to the upside and closes or breaks to the downside and closes, there's a very strong chance that price will continue in that direction, or should we say high chance. Now, with that being said, what we can see here in the markets is a very strong momentum candle. The behavior that's current here that we have all these arrows pointing at is starting to indicate to us a depletion 
in the market. There's a lack of volume. There's lots of wicks. There's lots of indecision candles. And this just simply means to us that neither the bulls or the bears are in control. What we're looking for is for evidence that the bulls have taken over or the bears have taken over. That could be a nice momentum candle to the downside, or that could be a break of a major level in the market where prices fail to break above for a long period of time and close in the direction of the break, which is a bullish candle. As you can see, once you link the depletion candles with the new behavior, which is the break above the key level and a strong bullish close, the chances are that the market will continue bullish in that direction. But you can't just say, well, you know what, because price is broken above, now it's time for me to take buys. You have to link the behavior along with the structure so that you can identify tradable opportunities. But we'll go on to examples at the end. But I hope you now understand how depletion candles work. Taking a look at our final example here, we can see the wick rejection candles. Now, what do these represent? Well, these candles represent weakness. But what do I mean weakness? Well, this simply means that bulls or bears attempted to push the market up or down, but failed to close strong like, like our momentum candles. It also represents a failure. Price attempts to break, continue, or reverse and fails. So let's say this is a key level in the market. This candle was once bearish, which attempted to break the key level, but because it didn't close strong bearish, it failed and rejected this level. It failed to break, continue, or reverse. The same here with this bearish candle. If this is our key level, at one point in time, this candle was bullish, attempted to break, close above. It could have been continuing or reversing, but failed with a huge wick rejection and closed below the level, which indicates to us a failure. The final thing this indicates to us or represents to us is a continuation or reversal. That price is preparing to continue the trend or potentially reverse. Now we're going to see an example of this. Our first example is an indication to us that price is failing to continue in this uptrend. This is on Euro British pound on the 4H time frame. If you see here with this example, we have a huge wick rejection. Here in, example, in this example, we also have another huge wick rejection. Now notice, at this point in time, with the data to the left of, left of us, we had price pushing bullish. We had price creating higher highs and higher lows. Now, this wick rejection represents nothing to us at this stage, simply because the market is pushing bullish and it's able to do that. There's not a key level to work with, so we wait to see what happens. But as price continues to move on and create data for us to work with, we can see more evidence right here that price attempted to push bullish and failed. Now, granted, this candle didn't close bearish, but we're not looking to trade this because we're not taking reversals here. But what we can in, we, what we can get from this information is that there is weakness in the market and a failure to continue pushing bullish. As you probably can see, as price continues to move on and create data, we can see it's failed to break above this level, which is signifying a lot more when we start to bring everything together, that the trend is potentially depleting and that there's a reversal that's probably in, uh, probably going to develop in the markets. Let's take a look at a second example. Here you can see a really clear downtrend. Prices create in lower lows and lower highs. This is on Euro British pound on the 30 minute time frame. Now, as price is pushing bearish, you can see here lots of green candles indicating bullish momentum. Now, at this stage, you might be saying to yourself, well, there's a very high chance now price will continue pushing bullish because of the momentum candles. But you have to hold on for a second. We have to continue to allow price to create a level before we look to take a reversal. And we need price to break that level to indicate strong bullish behavior. At this stage, we start to see wick rejections. 
This is indicating to us a failure to break close above the level and a depletion in this bullish move. We also continue to gather evidence here of multiple wick rejections where price is closing with bearish bodies. Now, this is a sign to us that because the trend is down, the wicks are coming from the top and the candles are closing bearish, that there's a high chance that price will continue to push down. Now, the reason why this is important is because we can see that there's a weakness from the bulls and there's a failure to continue to make new highs. At the confluence of the bearish body closes and the wick rejections, you can now start to gather enough confluence to support that the markets will continue down in this overall downtrend. Our final example here is on Euro British pound on the 15 minute time frame. Now, you can clearly see that the overall structure of this market was pushing bearish. Price is making lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, and lower lows. What you anticipate at this stage is price to pull back to create some sort of lower high and then see the market continue down. Now, if the market starts to create the wick rejections, as you can see here and here and here and here and here, that starts to indicate to us that there's a weakness or failure in this bearish movement and the likelihood of price continuing down is very slim. Now, it doesn't mean you're looking for buy straight away, but what you can now start to do is build a plan. If you're getting multiple wick rejections of price failing to push down, you can then say to yourself, well, at this stage, we have a lower high level here in the market. If price starts to break close above this level, then this supports the behavior as a confluence, which is the wick rejections and the momentum candle after the break of structure that price will continue pushing bullish. And as you can see here, price continue to push bullish. So I hope the three candle formations I've shared with you will be able to provide you with enough information to be able to start back testing and looking in the markets, identifying tradable opportunities and being more confident with your analysis and approach to the markets. Now, when bringing it all together, you need to think about three things identify structure. When using these free candle formations here, you want to be making sure that you're trading with the trend or the direction of the market. We know that a trend develops by creating structural highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, and lower lows. We also identify an uptrend that creates a structure low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, and higher low. If you're new to trading, I do advise you go and take a, a look at some of the other YouTube videos on YouTube or even my own here, and uh, this will be able to help you identify structure. They don't always develop like this. They can if you're patient enough and wait for uh, cleaner setups, but this is just a slight indication of how we bring it all together here you must make sure you're trading with the direction of the market and you can identify clear structure. Now, we also need to be able to identify key levels. Key levels are going to be formed or developed or created in many different ways, but the most common is going to be your break and retest. That just simply means that price creates a structural high in an uptrend, breaks the structural high, returns to the structural high to create what we call a retest before then continuing the direction. We also have our break and retest with patterns, which is price creating your structural lower high, your lower low, returning back to structure, failing to continue to push down, but then retesting structure to create what we'd like to call a double top. So, Identify the direction of the market, which is clearly up or down in this instance. Look for price to break your key levels in this instance, and then look either for your retests or your patterns. Once you have these two things, the final thing you need is 
your candles. And this is all you need. Your momentum candles, your depletion candles, and your wick rejection candles. So let's take a look at three examples of how you can start to use this in the markets. Okay, traders. So the first example we're going to take a look at today, just bringing everything together before we wrap up, is a US dollar, Swiss franc. Now, we can clearly see here with the structure of the market, it's been pushing bullish for a very long period of time. We can also identify here that price is now starting to move sideways. We don't have a real clear directional bias. We're now starting to break this uh, trend line for the first time in a long time, but we're not ready to take a trade. Even though we can start to identify here strong bearish momentum candle, we need to hold tight a minute. What we want price to do is take out a key level in the market. Now, we've spoken about this before. What's important to us is identifying structure, identifying our key levels, and then looking for our behavior candles. So let's wait patiently. We know that there's a chance that price will continue down. We have the break of the brick wall, and we also have lots of candles here that are moving sideways, which is indicating to us that the price is probably going to fail pushing bullish. Now we're starting to see momentum stepping into the markets. For the first time in a long time, price is breaking a major key level here. Now we see a strong bearish momentum candle close. But remember, we do not take the trade yet. What we need price to do is come back to a key level to indicate to us that the bears are really in control. What are we looking for? We are looking for our retest of our key level, and we're looking for our bearish momentum candle. Now, once you bring all of that together, the question is, can you take this trade? Well, the answer is yes. We have enough confluence and evidence here to indicate that there's a very high chance price will continue now because we have a break of the key level. We also have our strong momentum candle and we have price coming back to retest this level. Let's see what happens. And there you have it, a beautiful take profit. So very simple, identify your momentum candle, identify price breaking structure, identify the break of the brick wall, and then also identify what the market is doing now, where it's making a structural high, lower high, a new lower low, and a retest in anticipation of price making a new lower low. Let's take a look at our second example. Here on Aussie dollar CAD, we can see that the overall structure of this market was pushing bullish. We also have an indication here in the market where price is failing to break above structure. We also have an area in the market where price is moving sideways and we are also failing to break the structure. Now we have an indication here of strong momentum and we now have evidence that the market is potentially going to go into continue pushing bearish. If we bring our wick rejection candles into play here, what we can see is lots of wicks indicating the most important thing that we're looking for here. A weakness, which means the bulls attempted to put this push this market up and failed, and a failure of this market continuing pushing bullish. The wick rejections indicate a weakness and a sentiment that is directing more bearish or, or indicating to us that it's more bearish than it is bullish. Why? Because the wicks are at the top, meaning bulls tried to push this up and failed. The direction of the market is now bearish. We have the strong momentum candles. We also have the break below a key level. The question is now, can you take this trade? Well, I hope the answer was yes because we have enough evidence here that the bears are more likely to push this market down than they are to push this market up. Again, we're going for the trade. Let's see what happens. There you have it. A really nice take profit. And how do we identify that? Well, we brought all of our confluence together and we simply used 
our wick rejection candles. Let's take a look at our final example. Here on Euro Aussie dollar on the 15 minute time frame, we can clearly see here that the trend of the market is bearish. Now, we're starting to gather some information here. The market is pushing bearish, but at the same time, what can you see? Well, we're getting a lot of depletion candles. Candles that are leaving wicks to the top, wicks to the bottom, very small in volume and body, indicating to us that this is a very, very strong indication that price is either going to reverse or potentially move sideways. Now, we can also add some more confluence to this by simply just dragging this to the left. If you look here, past history has told us that price around this area also struggled before continuing to push up. Multiple wick rejections, lots of indecision candles. So this is a sign that guess what? Either the bears are taking profits because they've hit targets or the bulls are stepping back into the market because the last time it was at this area, it struggled or price struggled for a little while before rallying to the upside. But we can't take a trade yet, but we can now start to build a picture. This downtrend is depleting. There's lots of depletion here indicating that the bears are failing to push this down. What we need to wait for now is we need to wait for evidence that the bulls or the bears are back in control of the market. And how do we do that? Well, we're waiting for price to break the depletion candles to the upside or to the downside to indicate momentum. Now, momentum, we know, is representative of a strong bullish candle or a strong bearish candle. But what we need to see the market do is clearly break above structure. Now, as you can see here, we have an area in the market where price was creating the wick rejections to the upside and downside. And then finally, we have the break close above this structure. Once we get this information, can you be taking a trade? Yes, you can. There are uh, a few things to think about when doing this, but we're not going to go into the nitty gritty. But we'll just take this trade as such, making sure our stop loss is below the level and we'll go for our targets, just keeping it simple. Now we have enough evidence and confirmation that we can take this trade with a very, very high chance of this trade winning. How do we identify that this was a good trade? simply because price was bearish. We have lots of depletion candles here, and we also have evidence that price is failing to break above and below. What we look for is for the momentum, and then we can jump into the trade. So I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this lesson today. And if you did, drop a comment below. Let me know how this gets on. And uh, as I always say, continue to trust the process.